Look at somebody and say, we need to understand the times. You got to understand the time. First Chronicles 12 and 32 talks about the tribe of Issachar, children of Issachar. Now, Issachar, of course, Jacob's son, when God was handing out his blessings, he referred to Issachar as a donkey sitting between what he was carrying and resting. Basically, a guy who works and understands work and rest. Stability is what the donkey represents. So this stability in these men allowed them to be, uh, Jacob blessed them with stability in uh, Genesis. And so we understand that this tribe, the Bible tells us in First uh, Chronicles 12 and 32, that the children of this tribe, the descendants of this tribe, which were men that had what? Understanding of the times to know what Israel what? Ought to do. The heads of them were how many? 200. And all their brethren were what? At their commandment. Very powerful. Just a small scripture. But man, I'm telling you, these dudes want to be Hebrew Israelite. They want to be a part of this, descendants of this or that. And man, they, they can't stack up with any of these three things. They don't understand the times. They don't know what they should do. And they don't follow their own leaders. Hebrew Israelites don't have leaders. They defy the very principle that iron sharpens iron and a man needs to be led. There should be pastors. They don't believe that. So they believe at any point one of them can jump up and tell and rebuke the other. That's not order. That's chaos. That's anarchy. So we're going to talk about these three things. About the children of Issachar. Y'all still with me? I know, I know. I know emotionally. I know. And it's a spirit. It's really a spirit. It's a spirit that the, that the media actually puts over people to, to blind them of truth and to distract them. It's a spirit. You know, we watch so many movies, so much TV. We've opened up an avenue of influence. And so when the enemy is ready to get us, make us forget the very people in our lives that love us, the very people in our lives Make us forget them and, and drop everything and go fight for an event that we're not even sure really took place the way they say. And we exert all of our energy toward that. Y'all, that's spiritual. You better understand. Look, somebody say you better understand the times. What we are facing in this time is a departure from the faith. Many that once believed are what? Now falling away. I know pastors that's been pastoring 40, 50, 60 years asking me, what about this Hebrew stuff, man? I mean, you know, are you going to incorporate it in what you're doing? Getting up saying, you know, Jesus was really black. I mean, I don't want to go into detail, but you know he was black. It's getting up, throwing this stuff in their messages and sermons. They once believed, but because of what YouTube is saying, they're falling away and the people are getting confused. Watching some brothers with a YouTube audience. That's the first thing I'm worried about, brother. Why do you have all that time to record all that? Because it's always long. <laughs> and then, why don't you have a church? Why don't you have a building? Nobody's really, all your followers are virtual. You haven't worked, built anything. You just think you have a voice because you have a camera. You ain't take care of your own wife, your own children. Your whole family hates you, but you got a ministry online. (laughs) 
You're addicted to sin. But you can go online and be whoever you want to be. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall do what? They're going to do what? Depart from the faith. Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and what? Y'all, there is nothing more seducing than this Hebrew Israelite movement because they know. See, what the media has done, what YouTube has done through this movement is take, what they're trying to do is take away the only thing that has kept African Americans in this country with some sort of contentment. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus has been the contentment of us. Yeah, sure, we didn't like the way we were treated as African Americans and there's discrimination and all that. But we could go into our prayer closet and talk to Jesus about it. Yeah, our faith was in Jesus. Even slaves getting beaten. Their prayer was that we would walk in freedom. They sacrificed their own freedom for fear of even being beaten to pray for us, to bring us to a place where Jesus would be our answer. Can I tell the truth in here? Yeah. So when folks start bringing up who's black and who's not and what the white man and all this, I'm like, what they're trying to do is they're trying to take Jesus out of the picture. That's the only thing that has kept us content. That's why we are here right now. Our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ. But seducing spirits and doctrines of devils have come to take that away from us. So now we are questioning the very Christ that brought us this far. We're ignoring everything that God has given us. We're ignoring it. Everything that God has done for us. We're ignoring it. And they're trying to cancel out our Savior. Say you've been calling his name wrong. All this time. So basically Jesus hadn't done anything for you all this time. It's all just been coincidence. Because you ain't been saying his name right so he's not going to answer to a name that's not right. All this time. You've been following the white man. So everything you gave God glory for, you shouldn't have. Everything you praise God for, you shouldn't have. Everything you thank God for, you were deceived. That's a doctrine of devils. Can I tell the truth in here? Boy, some folks with some strange looks on their face. Amen. We might have some seats next week. You want to go to the angry church that's out there protesting, you go ahead. I'm not going to get upset over nothing I saw on TV. Not TV. Now, if it happened right in front of me, I might have a whole different reaction. But TV is not going to get me in the streets. Not TV. I was watching news anchors last night. These videos, there, there's some videos on YouTube where they show how news anchors are programmed. And they showed all the different ones. They showed 50 different networks across the country. And all 50 anchors repeated the same joke, repeated the same salutation, repeated the same little funny statement that they made in between. They all did the same little chuckle and laughter. They all looked at each other and repeated the same banter toward each other like robots. All the networks. CNN, Fox, every one of them. No, see, I don't watch Fox News because, you know, that's the white man's network. I watch what CNN says because they're going to tell it like it is. And they got them 50 different states. They're saying the exact same thing, same laughter, everything. Democrats and Republicans, at the end of the day, after they get to arguing, they're going to play golf. 
Exact same party. How are you Democrat? I'm Republican and we both Freemason. Men have been provoked to wrath because they lack paternal guidance and masculine role models. They are angry and enraged when a man is raised by nothing but a woman and he doesn't have a man to calm him down and balance him. He going to believe what he see on TV and he going to go load his gun up and run after him. He's going to act emotionally. He's going to blow up and say stuff that he's going to regret later. He's going to do actions and perform different things that he's wish he hadn't done. He's out of control because he's emotional. And God did not create men to react emotionally. They live their lives in regret. All those men in prison acted emotionally. And they live every day wishing they hadn't done it. And they get angry at their father for not being there and teaching them how not to react like that. Anybody growing up wishing that they could be the greatest gangster of all times? That's not what they wanted to be originally. But they became that out of the wrath and the anger that was in their heart because they lacked masculine role models and paternal guidance from a father. So now this is the time. Now they're all rising up. Oh, we got to get out of here. We got to march and we got to do it. Dude, did you pay your electric bill? Why are you living off a woman? Yeah, why a woman paying all your bills? Where's your money? Before you hit them streets, brother, pay your bills with your money. We got to mark this is just injustice. No, injustice is in your house. You pimping your woman. That's injustice. Let's protest that. I'll make a sign. Your inferior self run into another fight because you can't handle the fight that's really going on in your house. You can't handle responsibility for your family. So you're going to run to the street and protest for somebody else's family. And the woman which is jive for letting you. She's whack too. Colossians 3 and 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be what? Discouraged. So that missing father, that absent father, sometimes he's in the home and he's absent. He's going to bring wrath in the heart of that child and anger. And that child's going to get discouraged about God, discouraged about Christianity, discouraged about what you said because you're not showing it. You're saying it, you tried to teach it, but you didn't exemplify it. Yeah, you teaching them that God is a provider, but you can't provide. You teaching them that God loves us all, but you can't love your own kids. So they're provoked to wrath and discouraged. Bad decisions are creating bad situations. Don't bad decisions create bad situations? Bad decisions gonna create a bad situation. You're gonna feel bad after you make a bad decision. And the situation is gonna reflect your bad decision. Instead of allowing God to work on them, their pride causes them to search for answers in their own heads and use their own understanding instead of being taught. So sometimes you can make so many bad decisions you don't want people to see all the bad decisions you made, so you won't even you, you won't even submit to any leadership that can help you, and you're gonna make more bad decisions based on the original bad decisions. Then you've gone so far from the faith that you gotta turn into a Hebrew Israelite because they don't care about your decisions. You gotta turn into some kind of religion that's not gonna check your behavior. 
Jesus is going to check your behavior. It ain't got nothing to do with the white man. They don't want Jesus because Jesus got commandments. They want to obey the Ten Commandments. Right, yeah, yeah, brother, on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath? What about the club? On, the, on, on, on Friday, Friars Day. Why are you puffing the joint? Smoking the weed and the Buddha? Chewing tobacco? <laughs> Smoking all the spices in the cabinet? Your wife ain't even got nothing to cook with. You got the coming and the time. Bruh, the paprika, really? Can't even make no stew. You know they broke, so they can't just buy drugs like they want. They got to just make it. Is that toilet paper you rolling that? You rolling that up with? I mean the brokest movement ever. They don't have nothing. Going to come to your church to try to preach to your people because you worked hard to get them there. God gave you a following. They just going to intercept it. Stand up. Oh, y'all know how y'all are getting deceived. That's the only thing. Man, when that happened Friday, I told my wife, I told my son because Cameron was like, you know, Dad, I was just hoping you would just stop. It's like, because then I was going to have to run out there and take a bullet for you. I said, shut up. <laughs> but, I told, <laughs> but I told my wife after, you know, I, they, these, these guys want to come into your church and take your audience and get that one moment so they can upload it to the internet and have a, two seconds of fame. Look what I did. And I told our congregation, I said, you know what you did? You, you disobeyed scripture. The Bible said, rebuke not an elder, but retreat him as, entreat him as a father. That's all you did. You want to get that on tape? You want to believe the Ten Commandments, but you're not going to believe that commandment? Rebuke not an elder? Brother, you would drop dead talking to that pastor like that. And if you was in the Old Testament, where you say you came from, Brother, a lightning bolt would have hit your gold teeth and shocked you into another dimension. <laughs> Some of you are original Hebrew, boy. You, them Levites would have cut you into pieces. Proverbs 18 and 2. Fools have no interest in what? And that's why he came. They was mad at me because James White ate them alive and I pushed it. I had it on everything, EX I, I used every outlet I had to show them getting toe up. Because I don't do debates, oh, but James does. And he ate them alive. And I mean, did it twice. How you gonna go back in there? Dude, if I done got just... <laughs> You ain't gonna knock me out twice. You know what I'm saying? I, why you go for a rematch? Oh, we gonna get him this time. And he did the same thing again. <laughs> Idiot. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their what? Fools have no interest. They don't want to submit to authority. They don't want to learn from others. They don't want to sit under teaching and be taught. They don't want to mature to a certain level. They don't want to grow. They don't want the process. They just want the progress. Ooh, hey, I need to write that down, write that down baby. That's going to the next video. But they don't want it. They only want to air their what? Own opinion. Here's what I think is going on. Turn the camera on. Here's what I think is going on. See, the, 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 no, 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 brother. I think you have bills you need to pay. I think there are some children somewhere that look like you, and you're not taking care of them. That's what I think. That's, that's what I think you should be showing. Show pictures of them. 
on your YouTube channel. Can I keep preaching in here? Bible said that the sons of Issachar, they know what to do. They knew what to do. Wisdom is available for anyone who desires it. However, those who refuse to submit to authority and leadership usually block their own access to wisdom and guidance. So if you don't want to submit to authority, you're not going to get wisdom and guidance. God is not going to raise you up on your own and teach you everything you need to know. He's not going to do that. He has an order. You got to submit. You got to sit. You got to learn. You got to gain wisdom through time. Jesus, 12 years old, he wasn't healing the sick and raising the dead. That didn't happen until he was 30. He had to learn. He had to mature. He had to get older. He couldn't call the 12 disciples if he didn't know what he was doing. He had to wait till he was old enough to call them. They weren't 12 kids playing in the, in, in the playground and all of them 12. <laughs> Peter hit me, mama. You go tell Peter. Come here, Peter. That's not how it happened. They didn't all grow up together. <laughs> he didn't go up to Peter and say, hey, Peter, I want you to follow me. And Peter said, nah, you follow me. Matter of fact, let's just walk together. No, he said, follow me. Why did he say follow me? Because he was the master. He was the one with the information. He was the one with the knowledge. He was the one with, the, 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 with everything that those guys needed. So how are you going to equate yourself with him? That's what these men want to do. They want to equate themselves with everybody because they didn't watch. I, well, I watched 20 hours of YouTube. Well, I watched 40 hours. I'm, I'm the leader. I'm watching it now, brother. You, you, I'm, I'm watching it now. It's on in my headphones. I'm listening to it. And so they're just deciding who's in, who's in charge. Wisdom is available for anyone who desires it, but you got to submit to authority. You got to sit under someone to learn. You have to be taught. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 21 and 24. Proud and haughty scorner is his name. Who dealeth in what? Proud wrath. You know what proud wrath is? Proud wrath is you get angry when somebody try to correct you. You get mad when somebody rebukes you. When someone in authority rebukes you and handles you as a leader handles a pupil, you get upset because you're proud and you think you're equal. And you, you, you're not taking into account where that person has been, what they've studied, how much they truly know and how God has led them to the point that they're in now. I get around men, I get around some pastors, sometimes that pastor may have 15 members. But because he's 70 years old, grown kids with grandchildren, great-grandchildren, when I get around him, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if he go to talking something, you know, that I don't agree with, you know, and it's probably just some, some old, you know, they, maybe they believe some Catholic ceremonial kind of stuff. But that stuff ain't going to make me mad where I'm going to go off on this man of God. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to respect just the years he's been on earth. That's honor. God blesses me for that. I'll make him feel any kind of way he want to feel. He can call me son, you know, young whippersnapper, <laughs> wet behind the ear. Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. I laugh at all. I ain't gonna. Now, wait a minute, sir. I think I have more members than you. I'm looking for the lightning bolt because neither one of us have members. Proud wrath. God will speak through his leaders. And when men choose to be defiant, they become their own gods. So when you defy leadership, you're your own leader. You're God. That's what these movements are. The black man is God. He's a God. He's like a God. 
small God, small G God. So in his own head, he makes his own decisions without the counsel of wisdom from his elders. Yeah. Oh, and you can get followed on YouTube like that because nobody's going to ask you where you came from. They're not going to ask you who are you in fellowship with. They're not going to ask you who's leading you. He's going to come on YouTube and see you and their anger is going to relate to your anger. Like a Pied Piper. You mad, I'm mad. Man, I'm going to listen to what you say so I can take your angriness and spread it to the folks that, I, that I'm mad at. Proverbs 12 and 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Ain't that the truth? A fool thinks he's right and will argue you down thinking he is right. Just as dumb as a donut, but think he is right. But he that hearkeneth unto what? Counsel is wise. Can I keep preaching? Uh, men nowadays, they do not know what to do, so they get angry. Yeah, emotional men. They don't know what to do. A father would teach a man, when you don't know what to do, come talk to me. Landon knows if, if he ever gets to a point in his life he don't know what to do, he's going to call his daddy. Right? But when men don't have that and they don't know what to do, they get angry. And they start thinking, if I had had a father, if my father had been there, so they get angry at their father all over again. And that wrath builds up. This makes it even harder to get back on track and submit to what? So their anger causes them to make decisions that they regret, which pushes them further into fear and doubt. You understand what I'm saying? So that anger, instead of going to someone that may know, seeking wise counsel, your father would not find somebody smart. Find somebody that's doing it the way you want to do it. And they're having some good success at doing it that way, from what you can see. Go to them. But if you don't do that, you're going to make decisions you regret. And it's going to push you back into fear and doubt. This makes it harder to get back on track and submit to God's authority. So you've gone so, away, so far away from God's authority that you can't find your way back. This makes it even harder to get back on track. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger does what? It resteth in the bosom of who? Fools. And the sons of Issachar, all their brethren were at their commandment. Do you hear me? They were following the leaders of, these, of this tribe. The children of Issachar that wanted guidance followed the leadership of the brethren that God appointed over them. So because God appointed leaders over them, when they wanted wisdom, they could go ask the leaders. Right? You can go ask God for wisdom and God's going to point you to somebody that has that wisdom. Man, I just preached. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It's going to point you to someone that has that wisdom. Because God wants us to need each other. That's how his order works. It's what he created the church for. Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have rule over you. And do what? How do they miss this? Submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy, not with grief. For that is unprofitable to you if they're doing it in grief. So you submit to authority. These religions, these beliefs, 5% of all this stuff, there's no authority to submit to. If I get mad, I can cuss you out and start my own group. And the anger just permeates and it just keeps going. Amen? Many people want to end biblical religion because they don't want to follow leadership because of their experiences with previous leadership. So they, they were under some bad leaders, some homosexual leaders that hit on them, some freaky deaky leaders that hit on their wives, 
some bad leaders that didn't pay the church bills and when they went into church, it was padlocked. Yeah, leaders that stole from the church. Leaders that cussed in the pulpit. Amen. Some old crazy leadership. And so they want to throw away biblical religion because of that. Hebrews 10 and 25, the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much the more as ye what? Man, as the end is coming, it's more important now than ever for us to come together. We need, look at somebody say, I need you. We need each other. We are working secular jobs. We are working for the devil, around the devil. The devil telling us what to do all day. We need to come in here and be with each other. Like-minded believers. Iron sharpening iron. Making each other stronger. Holding each other accountable. Amen? Amen. All these, man, we got a room full of Uber drivers. They catch you going to the club. They're going to pull over. They're going to tell the person they drive. Say, hold, hold on one second. I got to make a stop. Pull over and say, hey, man, what you doing at this club? You better get out of here, man. I'm sorry, man. I got weak, man. Okay. I'll, I'll follow you. <laughs> Accountability. Without that, you in your own head, you can do whatever you want to do and believe that God's going to forgive you. So we need each other, especially in this time. More than ever before, we need each other. This was God's plan. He left this plan. We can't defy it. People desire, man, without the church, without the fellowship, your life is going to get worse and worse. Your issues are going to be amplified. Your health is going to fail. You don't have anybody to lay a burden on. You don't even have anyone to help you carry it. Look at somebody and say, I need you. People desire to create their own spirituality and totally disregard leadership and fellowship. They believe that, let me take a breath, <clears throat> in spite of their constant error and judgment, inconsistent behavior, bad decisions, lustful desires, emotional instability, lack of understanding, knowledge depravity, family drama, fatherless issues, etc., they should be followed, supported, and leaders of others. They're going to just decide. They're going to put on the raiding suit. <laughs> dress like Mortal Kombat. Start preaching. The black man stuff. But in spite of all these other things. Constant error in judgment. Inconsistent behavior. Bad decision. Lustful desire. Emotional instability. Lack of understanding. Knowledge depravity. Family drama. Fatherless issue. All those issues. And they're going to stand up and start a movement. And they're going to draw all that to them. And take everyone nowhere. First Timothy 3 and 2. A bishop then must be what? Blameless, husband of one wife, vigilant. This next one, sober. A leader can't be on drugs. He can't smoke weed. The weird thing is, why does he need weed? That's what nobody says. If you're leading me and you need weed, you can't lead me. That means you're using the weed to do something that the fruits of the spirit are supposed to do. You're using weed to clear your head and feel better about things even though everything is hazy. You don't have the love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance to do that. Temperance, self-control. But you have to be sober and of what? Good behavior. Good behavior. Oh, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Summary! It's the truth anyway. 
The problem with our world today is that people have given up on God's way. Many have decided that the Internet is a better source for church than physical fellowship with the saints. These newfound beliefs, black Hebrew is like 5%, nation of Islam, etc. Seek out men that have been hurt by Christianity or let down by the Christian church and give them false beliefs of being greater than others. They make them feel that they are special and have been lied to about their true worth. Men with low self-worth fall for this and accept the teachings because they can excel in these belief systems without ever being moral or renouncing carnal habits and desires. Because most of them lack authority and true leadership in their upbringings, they are comfortable believing that these things aren't required to have God. Even some Christians have left the church because they do not want to submit to authority. They stay home and get fed by internet preaching and totally forsake the fellowship of God's people. They lack strength and true understanding because they will not submit to God's system of fellowship and leadership. These people are easily led astray by their emotions and manipulated by the media and the powers that be. They run to protest and organize gatherings against social issues but ignore the issues that they are causing. Can I say that again? They run the protests and organize gatherings against social issues, but ignore the issues that they are causing. They pay more attention to issues outside of their home than their own issues. They want to deal with problems that they are not responsible for instead of dealing with the problems that they are causing. They neglect what their family really needs and replace it with what they want. They have knowledge, but never truly understand that the problem is them. Until we deal with ourselves, we cannot march for others. Until we adhere to God's plan, we will continue to cause issues to march against. Until we point the finger at ourselves and line up with God's will for all believers, we will continue to be at fault for the ills of our society. We have to start with ourselves. Put the camera on us. Deal with ourselves. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us that this is going to happen. Tell, tell us, the disciples said, when shall these things be? In other words, Jesus, what time is it? What's going to show it? What shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answered and began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. In other words, there's going to be a lot of deception going on. A lot of deception. Many are going to come in my name saying, I am the Christ. Another passage, he said, they're going to say, he's over here, he's over here, he's over here. He's like this, he's like this, he's like this. He said, don't pay it any attention because they're going to deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation. And this is the catcher. Kingdom against kingdom, which is race and ethnic group against race. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines, and what? And what? And what? Troubles, like you saw this week. There will be troubles. And when you see all of these troubles, know that these are the beginning of sorrows. I'm telling you now, don't get angry and run out and do something that you'll regret. Remember, remember, Remember that it's TV. Remember that there is an agenda. Remember, I talked about it in Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 4, that the media is owned by Luciferians that are bringing Satan's agenda into this world. 
ushering it in through the media. So don't be angry. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I thank you for a message like this, for the timing of it. Father God, I thank you, Lord, because you hold us in your hands. Our safety belongs to you. And our commitment to you, Father God, needs to be stronger than ever before. So I pray right now that these people, under the sound of my voice, God, would trust their leader. And in this hour, would not allow the enemy to provoke them to wrath, provoke them to making bad choices, provoke them for saying the wrong thing, provoke them into doing something damaging. And even if they feel anger, Lord, you said, be angry, but sin not. So help us, Father God, to follow your way and stay on course and not be distracted and keep our focus and not take the bait and not do things we'll regret so that we will be standing like that tree planted by the rivers of living water. And when the smoke clears, we'll still be standing. Help every man in this room under the sound of my voice to protect his home, protect his children, protect his wife. Help them, Father God, to stand in the doorway of their home and not allow the enemy to spoil their goods. Help us as heroes to stand strong in this hour. This is what we are to do. This is what you desire from us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.